Our fifth and final group is going to introduce us to the SNAP Corps. I'd like to first introduce you to our, our presenters. Uh, first, I'd like to present uh, Giselle Davila from Fenton High School. Giselle is a soccer player. These two are of my own family bent. We're all uh, because they're both in soccer. Uh, she plays soccer with her school and also with her club team, Palermo. She works at Office Depot. She is attending or planning to attend Milwaukee School of Engineering with a major in civil engineering and construction management next year. This is Manuel Perez. He goes to West Chicago High School. He plays soccer for his school. What's your what's your club team? Okay. And he also plays basketball for West Chicago. Uh, he goes to COD for architecture, planning to go to COD, I believe architecture, isn't that your idea? Okay. And, uh, and then planning to transfer to Robert Morris after that's over, correct? Okay, I'm gonna turn this over. I'm excited to see what their product's gonna, uh, how the product's gonna present. And uh, man, Giselle, here we go. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Manny. I have a question for you guys. Have you guys ever experienced Tangled headphones before? <laughs> for a modern day person. Yet the problem with headphones is the fact that they get tangled so easily. The world has not yet gone completely wireless. Um, and for the things I have, it has been extremely costly. Uh, we found two similar solutions to ours. The zip buds, it's on the left and ICO, which is on the right. Uh, the SIPPOTS have a solution integrated with the headphones, so it would require the consumers to buy an entire new set of headphones. And uh, ICO is pretty much similar. There's been several solutions similar to ICO. There is a clip on the back, and you would clip it on the side of your pants, because you know, everyone likes having to carry around a clip on their side of the pants. And, uh, <laughs> uh, both products were success successful. Uh, they both ex uh, over went over the expected goal they had. This proved that the Tangle headphones were definitely a problem and that consumers were willing to spend money on the solution. To validate our purpose for a project, we created an online survey to, create, to get an idea if this was an actual problem or not, and how much money would people be willing to spend on this. We actually received 22 responses, and we validated the results. Uh, for the question, have you ever experienced Tangle headphones? About 91% said yes and nearly 10% no. And uh, Tangle's, he Tangle headphones are a big problem for me. They, have a, they had a skill from strongly agree to strongly disagree. About 62 agreed to it being a big problem for, for them compared to 38 who said no. spending to uh, spend on a solution. The vast majority of the people chose the $20 to 30 range. And even actually 10% of the people were willing to spend $40 to $50 on a solution. This proved to us that to some people it's actually a very big problem for them and they would actually be willing to spend that much on, on a solution for headphones. Uh, we asked uh, we asked uh, the people if they knew any solutions to the problem, and 
59% of the people said no. This told us that they, that if there are solutions out there, they aren't too popular to people to know what the, there are possible solutions. We decided that our solution to this problem had to have four very important characteristics. Reliable, easy to use, durable, and most effective for consumers because most people don't want to buy cheap headphones that are expensive because then they know they, they aren't worth it. This was actually the first approach we took to uh, make designing your product. On the left, uh, we first took some dimensions of some regular pair of headphones. And then on your right, um, that was actually our first design, our first idea that would eventually become our, um, our solution for the problem. This is the mechanism that would have let our product work. The case would have been, would have been double sided. On one side, the headphone cord would have been inserted, and on the other, the, that would be where the case would snap on and when folding, folding it. Thought 
we were actually going to create the case for it, but due to time constraints, we didn't have time to actually get to the final product. So actually just three hours ago, I came up with this. Um, I just came up with a larger piece and where it shows the mechanism of it. And Probably in the future, we would probably try and take a different approach to this. We would probably try and uh, do some 3D designs on a vector and then try to print them on a 3D printer. <coughs> A big thank you goes out to Mr. K and to see the staff who helped us get through our project. We would also like to uh, thank Jeff Williams uh, for helping us um, with our TV silicon because we didn't really know about it. And your expectations. Any questions for us? I'm curious, why did you pick uh, RTV as a medium for embedding the cords that would we actually asked um, Jeff Williams, we asked him if um, making a mold for them would be a good approach for it, and he said um, it would be a good approach for it. Um, we probably wouldn't need this much RTV in the future. We n I never really worked with it before, so I, I really know how to work with it. I guess I ended up putting too much of it, and um, that's why it took me too long to like carve it down and stuff. It's actually not going to be this thick or anything like that. We were, we were trying to make it like as thin as possible, but um, due to time constraints, we didn't have the time to. Um, we actually, that's why we took the dimensions of the headphones to get like a, a decent idea of how like uh, the circumference of the case would be. We were actually um, taking a little um, rectangular approach instead of a circular approach, uh, since it would be a little easier for the headphones to like pop in. Job as far as following the <coughs> scientific method. Um, I know if you had more time, you'd probably could come up with more solutions. Than so, what was the total amount of time that you had to, to work on this? Well, on working on the prototype, we actually spent a lot more time doing the research and stuff like that. Um, so, as for the prototype, we actually only had about two weeks, I would say. Because we still had it, um, we had the silicon rubber shift, and we ended up getting asked the right one, so we just had to wait a couple more days. <laughs> so if you have more time to work on this, you probably do what 3D printing going forward. Yeah, that'll probably be our best approach next time. Yeah, I want everyone to come back.